Well, g'day guys, Mad Matt here once again. So, today I'm messing around with the rear end of the 80 series, and I was thinking to myself, you guys might appreciate some of the tips that I've picked up over the years that, that revolve around, believe it or not, the rear wheel bearings of 80 series. So, I just thought I'd run through some of the tips that I've picked up. Now, everybody's going to have a different opinion and all that. And look, I'd love, you, love to hear your opinion. Post it in the comments so that others can consider what you have to share as well. Now, what, let's start here. Notice all the oil coming out of the out of the axle tube there or out of the wheel bearings in this case well notice also in here there is no axle seal and that's because I run the rear wheel bearings in the differential oil so before we get into why how do I do that simply leave the axle seal out I don't run a gasket on the axle to hub flange I just run a um, that blue RTV sealant okay you know just face to face now the reason I run that that in my opinion the it the drive from the axle to the hub comes from the frictional loading on the face here to the face of the axle and these two dowel pins that locate things so that that frictional load in my opinion what I used to find when I did a lot of low range work was the gasket there's even though it's a tiny amount the axle would move like this on that hub and the gasket would walk out of the hub and crack and then I'd get an oil leak at this face so th that's my theory on it be it right be it wrong it seems to work as a general rule other than when I had the axle out the other day I didn't I must add some oil left on the surface and the RCV RTV didn't uh, seal so I've got that little oil leak which is what I'm fixing today so it's a very minor thing but um, I thought I'd just show you that so that's my theory don't run a gasket run RTV some sort of silicon you know oil resistant proper sort of sealant in there for that so I don't how do you run oil here take the this oil seal out don't run them at all and you overfill your differential I add about 400 millimeter mils of oil extra diff oil into my diff and the way I do that I fill the diff as per normal through the filler plug and let's see if we can show you. Anyway, you probably know what a filler plug looks like. Anyway, on the back of there, I fill that as per normal, and then I pull the uh, diff breather hose off, and I use a little um, 100 mil syringe that I've got, and I just put the oil, extra oil in through the diff breather, and that's how I add it. Now, what, why? That's how I do it. Why do I do it? Well, this is my theory. I used to find that I was doing rear wheel bearings probably every 6 to 12 months. 12 months would be a good run. And when I'd pull the wheel bearings out, I'd have all sorts of issues in there with rust and all that. The bearings would be stuffed every single time. I couldn't get sort of more than 6 months out of a set of bearings. I tried all sorts of different things. Tried different greases and all of that. Didn't work. So I, but every time I pulled them out, I'd always find there was also diff oil in there. Now, so I got to thinking, I thought, well, if I whip that seal out and run them in oil, because let's face it, I think some of the early Land Rovers, I don't know about modern ones, but some of the early ones used to run their wheel bearings in oil, which is a great idea. Trucks do it as well. And I used to, I was thinking, well, my differential bearings, they're running in oil. I'm not changing them every week. So oil's got to be a better lubricant than grease. So I left them out. The, and this is how, <coughs> pardon me, how I set them up. So when I first put the the um, wheel bearings in there, I put a smear of grease just on the on the surfaces for the initial run. I because until the diff oil gets out into this area, there's no lubrication. So you you just put a little bit of grease on there, but you don't have to pack the grease into the bearings like you you normally would. Put the bearings, assemble it all up. And, uh, and then tighten the wheel bearing. So this plate here, which is, you take those two Phillips screws out in this vehicle. Yours might be different if it's not an 80 series. Okay, you take those two screws out and then these three pins here rotate and that there is essentially the nut that tightens up onto the wheel bearings and tightens them up. Now, normally you nip 
wheel bearings up tight till the hub starts to load up whilst it's rotating and then you back them off a little bit and that's how you adjust them up. What I do with this procedure is I actually run them tight. In that initial setup I actually run them up until they 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 start to, to feel you know tight and then I back them off as the minimal amount I can and the reason I do that you need to make sure that the hub never moves when you're hitting bumps and corrugations and the like because if you do the oil that's now in here on that inner seal that's back inside there on the, you know on the other side of your inner wheel bearing that's now an oil seal it's not a grease seal so that seal has to keep the oil inside here. If it doesn't, that oil then gets on your handbrake shoes, which, let's face it, an 80 series handbrake's nigh on useless anyway, so it's no, no great loss if you do get oil on your handbrake shoes, but um, it's what I've found is that by running those wheel bearings just that, uh, you know, sort of a degree tighter than I normally would, um, that solves that problem. To give you a proof in the pudding, shall we say, these wheel bearings have not been out in two years all right no issues whatsoever in two years in that time i've done well you guys know roughly how much four wheel driving i do i've done heavy towing i've done probably four trips five trips into the victorian high country uh probably six seven trips up to queensland and back um all my local wheeling whether it be rock crawling or or um you know um you know dirt roads corrugations all of those sort of things two years and right now i'm not even pulling them out i'm putting the axle back in when i finish talking to you guys because these bearings are you know they're just in they're just in really good condition now you might say well matthew you're running a risk well you guys know how much i over service my vehicles uh i don't believe so but what's more i carry i carry wheel bearings and all the necessary bits and pieces in the vehicle at all times so worst case scenario i can deal with this on the side of the road um without too much drama so so there's that side of it I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether you think I'm a moron doing it that way. I think the proof's in the pudding. I do know of one other mate of mine who's a mechanic and he does the same thing. And other than that, everybody I say to, say this idea to them, they go, oh, oh no, Toyota wouldn't do it like that. <laughs> and they don't like the idea and they like changing wheel bearings. Good luck to them. Um, so now the other thing I'm doing, I do, is let me show you here so that's your standard stud that you would run in an 80 series rear diff um one-handed this is fun all right hang on there we go so that stud screws down in there all right and then you know your, your axle slides over that and then your cone washer which is there slides over that and then you tighten it all up. Well, a lot of guys find that they shear these studs and so they upgrade them to a 10 mil stud. In all the years of four wheel driving, I've never had that issue. My suspicion is that the reason they're shearing studs is due to butchery. Oh, that big word. All right, look on the axle here. Uh, oh, I sometimes wish I had three hands, one for the camera and the rest for you guys. But um, see those c c tapers down in there? Well, that's where those cone washers sit. Now, what happens is people get tempted to smack the axle on the outside there to loosen those cone washers off. And that deforms that cone face, and therefore the cone um, doesn't sit home properly, and therefore they come loose. Right, so that's how, once that axle starts moving back and forth on that face there, that's going to create flog when you back off and come onto power, or if you're in corrugations, your wheels are going accelerating and deaccelerating like this when you're hitting drive, no drive because of the corrugations, that sort of thing. Okay, that just flogs these out in no time at all. You strip your studs. I've never stripped studs in uh, in my four drive history with 80 series. That's probably I'm probably talking 200,000 k's worth of 80 series driving. Now, how do these cone washers work? Right, people have got all sorts of fancy principles, but let me tell you, this is how they work. They're very clever, um, Mr. Toyota is a clever fella. What they do 
is when they tighten down into the taper, the taper forces the cone washer to clamp onto the shank of the stud right in there where my thumb is. Now I'm trying to see if I can show you. Yeah, see there, there's that tiny little split. All right. That allows the cone washer, it's it's actually, you know, got that cut down the middle to clamp onto that shank. And effectively, it turns the bolt into part of the axle, all right? That's how they design. So when they're tightened up correctly and in good, perfect order, i.e. they haven't been hit by a hammer on the outside of the axle, that turns that whole axle and stud into one piece of metal. And that is really, really strong. Now, why am I using cap screws? And I'll tell you why, simple. I got sick of trying to, of getting these cone washers out. The technique, the proper technique is you get a brass drift and you hit the end of the stud. Now, I, I found that um, I would regularly either burr the stud or it would get a slight bend in it or something would happen to the stud and it would be annoying me and, and, and it just wasn't easy. So I run these cap screws and, um, and in there like that and they're a high tensile you know, cap screw and that way when I undo the cap screw, the cone washers come out with it and it's not a, not a problem at all. So I don't need to run the drill these out to M10s or anything like that. How about I help you out? Let me grab my ruler. If you guys want to do this conversion, you can, uh, there's your ruler, you will be able to, I'll give you the bolt size, then you'll know. How about that? Gee whiz, Mad Matt, you, uh, you give us everything we could ever want, don't you? Geez, you're a good bloke. All right, one-handed ruling. All right, so this is M8, 1.25, there you go, 40 millimeter. All right, so that's the cap screws you're gonna, you're gonna get if you wanna do this conversion. All you're going to do is get the studs out and uh, clean the holes out with some nice brake clean or something suitable so there's no residue in there. And, um, and then a, a little bit of thread lock is not a bad idea on those threads there, okay? Just on the cap screw, the threads there. All right, I think that's, um, that's about all I've got to give to you today on that stuff. But uh, that's how I run my real wheel bearings. Lovely idea. Now, one tip for your front wheel bearings that I've found is run a marine grease, like a trailer wheel bearing grease, something like that. And again, I run my front wheel bearings just a little bit tighter than I should, and that seems to work as well. Why the marine grease? Well, it's designed to cope with a little bit of water in it. Um, if there's any engineers, clever fellas, who uh, want to develop a system to run front wheel bearings in oil, Come and talk to me because I got an idea how to do it, um, and it's not that involved. Um, and I'd love to develop that, but I need somebody who wants to be um, involved and take it to market and all that. So, uh, if you're keen on that idea, I don't know how much future market there is for 80 series wheel bearings running in oil, though. Hey. <laughs> Okay guys, look, I know this has been a long video and thank you very much for sticking with it till the end. But um, if you have stuck with this till the end, would you share it, like it, send it to your mates, do all that sort of stuff, that'll help me out. And hey, it might help your mates learn a few things as well. Oh, last tip, last tip. See these little cuts in the end of the axle housing? There's four of them, okay? They tell you where those screws go. They're your locking screws. They come out. They lock this this nut in place. And so if you you know I've seen people trying to you know work out where to do the screw up and they don't know. Well, that's the mark. Mr. Toyota tells you exactly where it is. Isn't that clever? All right, guys, I'm out of here. I've got to go and put this back together, and then we're going to go and play with the Bandera. Have a good day, guys. Cheers. <laughs>